parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show 571. I am... doesn't say what's up. I... Sorg doesn't say I what's am... up. I am fake Sorg. We are here in faux Pittsburgh. Um, all right. Um, re- real, real talk, real talk, guys. I'm Mad Mike. You, you know who I am. With me, with me, as as is is accustomed at this point, is the Riz. Hi, Riz. Hi. We do things. We we do do things, you know. <laughs> All right, you said so do. yeah, I did say do do. All right, so basically, here's what happened, guys. I know if, if Riz, did you watch the midweek four last week? You probably didn't. Uh, no, I didn't. You're an asshole, Riz. That's you know right. I didn't. I know, I know you didn't. Um, but I I said Sorg was looking. Uh, Sorg had v- three very different locations he was traveling to this week. Uh, he was trying to find out where Parts Unknown is. Did you know about this, Riz? Oh, I did not. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, I, if you follow Sorg social media, he's he's saying he's doing other things entirely, but that's not really what he's doing. He's looking for parts unknown, and unfortunately, uh, Sorg has come down with Mantar pox. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's ver- it's very disappointing. So unfortunately, Sorg is not here this week. I mean, I um, mean, it could be it could be worse. It could be Xbox. <laughs> God damn it. You're right. It could have been Xbox. Oh man, I'm good today. I'm on the roll. It, I'm on a roll. It, it could have it been going. the gobbledy. It could have been the gobbledygooker fever too. Ooh, it very well could have been. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You don't want guys. Pro tip from Mad Mike: You do not want to get in bed with a lady or a guy who has what is affectionately known as the gook. You don't want that because you might birth a hand. Or a Bertha Fay, ha <laughs> uh, ha! But yeah, um, mm. no, 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 no. all right. So Riz, mm. Riz, um, yes, I, I, I'm here in Pittsburgh, New York. You are there on the I'm outskirts of Pittsburgh. I'm over here. Yes. yes, and uh, so so let's let's get into the to these um. We we have to do the intro brought to us by our wonderful producer Missy. Thank you, Missy. Um, I like how you put on the glasses that you can't see the intro for. I can read well enough. Thank you. I, I made the font bigger for myself. So I Good agree. point. Um, for those of you who, who this is your first time watching us, hi. Sorry. We're the, rest, we're the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, you can find us at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can email us good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can call us. Please call us when you're drunk. Call us with your live um, NXT reactions. Call us with your... With your pay-per-view reactions at 412-206-WMS0, that's 9670, program us in your phones. Label it, call when drunk. We don't even care what you talk about. We will play it on the show, and we will react to it. And sometimes, if it's unintelligible, we will read what Google thinks you said. (laughs) Sometimes those are even funnier. Uh, Of course, you you can always follow us at Mayhem Show on the Twitter machine. We live tweet. If there's wrestling going on, we're generally live tweeting about it. Generally. I um, mean, like two weeks ago, I was doing a Shikara special. Yes. Yes. And, I mean, that was awesome. And and every wow. every Thursday, to, to the chagrin of a lot of people, I live tweet Impact. But in a few weeks, I'll also be live tweeting Lucha Underground again. So... You know, you take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and then you have the Mayhem Show. The Mayhem Show? The Mayhem Show. Uh, you can also the look Mayhem us show. up on video or audio on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, you, you were supposed SoundCloud. To, you were supposed to say the Mayhem Show. And we were supposed yeah. to do the Facts of Life yeah. thing. I know, but we would have and just kept saying Mayhem Show until one of us moved on. Exactly. No, I, I, I Riz, I'm fake Sorg. I have, it's pacing. It's pacing, it's directing. 
there's a producer in my ear. Missy okay. is glaring at me, telling me to move on. I don't know you why. Don't, you don't want that glare. No, I don't. don't trust me. You've had, I've had that glare I've, before. You don't want that glare. I've had that glare during a podcast. That uh, I think we all have at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Scary. Yeah, it, it's 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 unpleasant. You don't want to upset Missy, so we try not to. But I mean, um, she's guess a nice lady, but don't but don't piss her off. But you want to know how to not upset Missy? That is to become a Patreon for this show, Riz. Mm. You, you go to patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. All you have to do is is you can donate a dollar. A dollar. A dollar and you get wrestling mayhem show gold. You you get when when we have our mayhem mania, you get so many benefits. And guess what? You can promote anything you want. Like I don't think we say that enough. When when you donate to the show, we will plug your shit. Like we and will. we will call you anything you want. Like that that's a real thing. Like all right, all right so Riz, let, let's go through our, our patrons. Um, of course, we have one of our longtime patrons, Bo Diggity. Woo. Woo. Yes, he makes us say that every week because every he just, week he just pays a dollar. Like it started like, with Chachi, by the way. It did Chachi start with Chachi. Was the only one who had to say that. But, that's true. But since Chachi is no longer on the show, because I don't know, he's preparing for some kind of ceremony that's happening in a month nothing, or something like that. Who nothing, knows? Nothing's really happening. In a yeah, month. I'm. It's just I'm, smoke and mirrors. I'm pretty sure the 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 priest is going to be Eric Bischoff. Um. Anyway, mm-hmm. and we all have three minutes to get out of there. <laughs> three minutes, and we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> also. Our other Patreons, Ed Burke at Ed Burke 37 on the Twitter machine, the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment, and viewers like you, I think. I think that I think we can add that on there. Mm-hmm. Viewers like you. I think I think we can do that. I mean, because uh, because of uh, Mr. Rogers' neighborhood being on Twitch, we can say that now. Of course. Uh, see, works for me. Absolutely works for me. Uh Traegar, of course, Traegar donates, and some guy named mm. Robert. F of the Johnstown. Both the people I saw last week at the uh, super at the Road to Super Indie. Excellent, that's or fantastic. At, which was called Aftershock Road to Super Indie, which was kind of weird, but awesome yeah. show nonetheless. Baby. Now, now I was gonna say after that, did did Bobby start calling himself FJ Town Baby instead mm-hmm. of Bobby? Hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and also at the pocket club a, level, it was a weird, it was a weird drive home. I, I'm sure it was. Uh, at, at the pocket club level, we also have Tina Keys, lovely woman, donating to us because for some reason she likes to hear our voices. And Christopher Bishop, whose Twitter name we do not have on here because I am not a real producer, unlike Missy, who is an excellent producer. All right, uh, so Riz. Hmm. All right, the, the fake sword glasses are off, so I don't have to be positive about uh, positive about everything a- anymore. Um, let, let's talk. Let's talk backlash. You're gonna you're gonna be negative about backlash. I might be. I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. Honestly, this is one of the weirdest shows I've ever seen. Okay. Well, all right. You know what? Let's let's break this down. Let's go match by match. We'll okay. talk about we'll give I, our predictions. I do you have, have I do have, have the list, the, uh, list. Uh, okay. for the pre-show. I, I don't know if it was announced yet or not, uh, but s- spoiler alert: uh, Ty Dillinger and Aiden, Aiden English are going to go one on one. Which Ooh, is a, I, I like that. I, I like that. I like that a lot because. Aiden now has something to do, like what he did in NXT, that could actually work, unlike the VOD villains did. Uh, now, question: Does mm-hmm. Aiden get to sing his full song on the pre-show? I hope so. Me too. I hope. I hope he does a Hamilton knockoff. Oh, you know, you know that's coming. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Because I mean, that, I, that I think, or he's saving it up for SummerSlam. Yeah, I don't know if I've said this before on the Mayhem show, but um, the first time I ever saw Aiden English was when I was watching one of those pre NXT shows before the first takeover, so I could kind of familiarize myself with the mm-hmm. people. And Aiden English sang a parody Doctor Horrible song, and I immediately fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. Immediately, 
No, that that was amazing. But uh, but yeah, Ty Dillinger is probably going to win this one. Um, I I don't know. Ty's been getting over a lot. I think I think we get. You know what? I'm get I'm gonna pull for the upset. I'm gonna say Aiden it's English. The, it's the pre-show though. It yeah. Is the it's Sunday Night Heat. That's why I'm going with the the sure thing, number ten. Okay. All right. Um. Anyways. Yeah. No, uh, I think. I I don't know. I all right. I'm I may be voting of my heart a little bit. You want you want to see something different. I want to see Aiden English win. Mm-hmm. Well, we're gonna get a lot of things we're gonna get from our heart in a little bit here. Uh oh. Okay. Because I wanna I wanna say something real quick, but that's that's neither here nor there. Uh, the so it, it starts off like the, the the what I'm going off is the wiki here, and uh, first we see the Baron Corbin versus Sami Zayn match. Yes. Yeah. I know. I know that's happening. Mm-hmm. It's happening. Uh, that I don't really know what to think about that match. Is Sammy now at the Bray Wyatt level? No, 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 no. See, because for Sammy's character, it works that he loses a lot. Mm-hmm. Because when he does get the big win, the the big win actually means something. Because he's but an underdog character. What happens if the big win happens? way down the line and it's not for anything. Well, the see the big win has to be for something. That's why that's it worked. True. That's why it worked in NXT. Mm-hmm. Like when he finally got that win over Neville, that's why it worked. And that's why he immediately couldn't celebrate because Kevin Owens took him out with the power bomb. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. I mean that that's why that's why it worked. That that's that's the whole point of Sami Zayn. Like Sami Zayn is Lose, 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 win, and immediately get destroyed. Yeah, of course. And one of those guys that immediate, immediately destroyed him is also on this card as debut match. Mm-hmm. Shinsuke Nakamura oh, 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 versus Dolph Ziggler. We got to make predictions. We oh. got to make predictions. Oh, yeah, we got to make predictions. Yeah, we got to make predictions. Looks- I'm, going on, I'm going ahead of myself. Here. Yeah, seriously. So Baron Corbin versus Sami Zayn. I don't quite know where to go with this one. I'm I'm going Sammy. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm Baron strong, Corbin. I'm gonna I'm say strong Baron Corbin. Sammy. I don't uh, know why. I just feel like he gets that push to a Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn match for the United States title. See, or, I don't I don't think that's gonna happen. Or Jinder Mahal versus Sami Zayn for the world title. That Maybe. seems slightly more likely. <laughs> that seems slightly more likely to me. That's a weird thing to say, isn't it? It's a very odd thing to say. Um, yeah, but I, I'm going Baron. I think Baron, because mm-hmm. especially since Baron just lost to Orton on SmackDown, he kind of needs a bounce back. And what better way to bounce back than bouncing Sami Zayn's head off the ground? Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, what's the next match we got, Riz? Shinsuke Nakamura versus Dolph Ziggler. Hmm. Shinsuke Nakamura. Who'd that guy ever beat? Uh, everybody. Really? Has he beaten Dolph Ziggler, Riz? No, no. I don't think he has. No. He's but but to. but he will. Yeah. He 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 will. <laughs> this, this is the easiest one to predict. This is this is this is going to be fun. This is going to be a fun one though, because from what I heard from like people at house shows, this match blew everybody away. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, and what do you think about the feud going into this so far though? I like that they're saving Nakamura for the pay per view. See, I hate it. You hate it. I hate it. I, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm bothered by it. I like, know. I, I shouldn't agree with the heel too much, and I'm starting to really agree with Dolph Ziggler. But then you get to see him kick Dolph Ziggler in the face multiple times. I can, yeah. Do you think this is a trend they continue, where Nakamura only wrestles at pay-per-views? Because I think that will die. That that will be where it dies for me. But I don't see that happening. Okay. 
You think, I don't, I don't you think just because it's his into... first match, it works? Yes. Okay. One hundred percent. Okay, I can go along with that, but if, because, it, if this is a trend... Shinsuke Nakamura's WWE wrestling debut is on a pay-per-view where people have to spend money to watch you what wrestle. Or if you have the network, forget you even put down your credit card years ago. Pretty much. Like I, <laughs> like I do every time. Yeah, I mean, I, I've broken it down. I don't even pay for the pay-per-views. No. I don't pay I, for the I pay, pay-per-views. I pay for the ride-alongs. I mean, hell, if you break down all the stuff I watch on the network, like even dollar wise, the amount I pay for the pay per views is probably 10 cents. Mm-hmm. Between 205, between NXT, between stuff like Ride Along and Table for Three and the documentaries they do. And hell, it, the network let me watch all 32 WrestleManias in the span of two and a half months. So, mm. yeah. So, I, you know, the pay per view, you get your money's worth. I mean, I watched all the all the World War Threes before <laughs> the Royal Rumble happened. Why did you do that? Because those are so hard to watch. They're three times the Royal Rumbleness. Oh man! All right, you know what? That's... And, and the yet and the yete as a samurai, which is confusing. <laughs> samurai yete sounds like a bad SNL sketch. But um, it's true. It's true. You've watched it before. I know you have. I have. (laughs) It's so hard to watch. And I don't mean like quality wise. I mean, physically, it's difficult to watch. It is because even though we're getting on a nice little tangent here, but I'm going to. It's okay. It's the mayhem show. Yeah. Even though you know, like, what's going to happen when. The first match, the, the first fall, uh, if I keep on calling it the fall brawl, the first uh, World War Three happens, and there's already a controversial ending. It's like, okay, now yeah. what? That's true. But yeah, oh, that's... Um, Tina in the chat said, uh, speaking of Sh- Shinsuke and Dolph, uh, she was talking about a house show that's around her next mm-hmm. month, the U.S. title match of Nakamura versus Kevin Owens. Oh Guess yes, what? they've added Dolph Ziggler to that match. Oh my, Tina, you have to go to that show. Yeah, <laughs> you have to go to that show. You have to give us a live report on it because that sounds phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Pun intended. What match is next, Riz? The uh, are, are you the weird the phenomenal one? Or? Uh, no, no, I'm just gonna go to this one. Damn it! I thought that was a segue. Damn, it. It, it, that, that's a good segue, and it's welcomed. <laughs> All right, so uh, what's what's the next match, fucker? The six women tag team match. Ah, yes, six women and a half tag team match. Mm-hmm. Uh, the welcoming committee, which, by the way, an awesome, awesome name for an indie fed stable. <laughs> uh, an e fed stable. That's an yeah, E-fed that, that you is know that's a, that you is know that's definitely an E Fed stable. That's an E Fed like, stable of the first three guys who started the company, and they see all these new people coming in. They're like, "Oh, oh my fuck goodness, it. <laughs> that is exactly <laughs> what that is." <laughs> oh jeez, it's exactly what that is. Oh no, that's exactly that's what it is. Exactly and what it is. And that's until everybody like decides this is stupid and just leaves the federation yep. because they only put themselves in the match. And then the person who owns the website forgets to re-up it and everyone loses all of their promos. Oh. <laughs> this anyway, to everybody in this in this group right now. <laughs> all right, so that that is that, that cuts the... too deep. Um Yeah, but so they're they're facing Naomi, Charlotte and Becky. Uh excuse me. Excuse me, Riz. What? Address them by their proper team name. Uh, what? Royal Fire Glow. Fuck! I'm not going to do that. <laughs> which is horrible. which is not even a good Efed stable nope. name. No, no, it's not. It's not. It. It's that's like Royal. That's Fire like the finisher Glow. of someone who has a vaguely patriotic character. Or. <laughs> Or they think they're patriotic, but they use Finn Balor as a uh, pick base. Yep, 
uh, Finn Balor wearing a wearing a Make America Great Again hat. Yes, with bat with poorly photoshopped skills. Oh uh, gosh, yes. <laughs> now, all right. Now I have a question. Mm-hmm. Why isn't James Ellsworth officially in this match? Well, they have Tamina in this match. Exactly my point. So I can see I can see something happening with her, and then just James Ellsworth gets on on the apron, tags himself in, gets beat. Riz, when do we see Becky Lynch versus James Ellsworth? We have to see it at some point, right? SummerSlam. SummerSlam. You, oh, you think they're gonna sit, wait that till SummerSlam? Yeah. Oh yes, sir. Big butt, big bucks, big bucks oh. and the whammies. All right, but do you think it's a straight up one on one match, or do you think it's a true intergender match? I think it's gonna be one on one, because they have enough time to make it boil. Okay, like, like they have enough time to do the straight in the inter- in, in, intergender match. But they do have some time to build off of that to make it a one-on-one James Ellsworth versus Becky Lynch match. Okay. All right. Turn. And when that happens, it's going to be huge. It's going to be straight fire. Fire! Now, now, what if I told you that I think James Ellsworth cost Becky Lynch a shot at the first ever women's money in the bank match. And that's where we get James Ellsworth versus Becky Lynch. Where at? At money in the bank. At money in the bank. Money in the bank. So, so you'll have Becky Lynch in a money in the bank match and then face James Ellsworth. Either that or like a money in the bank qualifier match that she has to beat James Ellsworth in. Like a beat the clock match? No, no. Just as she has or to straight. be James Ellsworth to get in the bank match. I can see that happening. Like, put that on the pre-show. That way Becky's, like, injured and stuff when she goes into a match. Notice we're not even talking about the match anymore. Well, I mean, it's... it's we're talking about our dreams, which are... It's, which a, it's a six-woman tag. Uh, no, no titles on the line. Which is not good. Well, I mean, there's a story around it. There is. So, so I'm okay. I'm okay with the no title being on the line because no of the title. story. Yeah, but you know, there's a story going on here, so I think I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Riz, who do you think is winning? I think the welcoming committee wins with the help of James. Okay. Big Jimmy, Big J. The the big hog. Big Jimmy Jams. <laughs> Jimmy Jams. Jimmy Jam Ellsworth. Um. Oh. I don't know. I think... Unless Ric Flair comes out. No, I think they're done with Flair. Oh, God. Oh, Riz. There, Riz. There's your intergender match, Riz, by the way. Yeah. Charlotte and Rick versus Ellsworth and Carmella. You, you oh, know he's waiting, to put, he's waiting to put that t- those tights back on. Oh, wow. That... Oh, that makes me vomit. Let's move bit. on right there. Uh, you know what? Yes, yes, we'll move. On. I'm gonna say this team, time... team Royal Fire Glow, whatever. I think they're gonna win. I you're think just they're gonna picking. Win. You're just picking the opposite of me. Oh wait, no, no, we, we, no, we, we agreed. We agreed on Nakamura. That's true. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm, I'm because I don't think there's. I think the main event stuff of the show. Is going to be more heel heavy, so I'm thinking the mid card is going to be more face heavy. Hmm. That, that's what. Then I, where that's... does this? So where does this one lie? Okay. Continue. What's the next match? What's the next match? I'm skipping. I'm skipping over one because I really want to get into this. Okay. The Usos versus Breeze Dango. Oh, this is the hardest match to predict on the card for me. It, it is. is the hardest match like, to predict. Like I don't like if this match controls what they do with the main event. In my opinion, yes. Like if they I'll go want, with you on that, I'll go with you on that. If they want something different, they want something fun and exciting. 
They want something that, that will draw people to them. It'll get people talking. Breeze Dango wins here. If not, <sighs> if they want to stay the course, the Usos win. See, and then see, they here's here's and, my, here's and then my... they keep it f- until when America Alpha. Oh no, wins no, 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 no! No, we'll get to this. All right, you know what? Mm-hmm. Um, oh God, because it could go. This could go one of two ways. Either Brizongo. Oh, fuck it. I'm calling them the fashion police. Either the fashion police mm-hmm. wins this or the Usos win by cheating. And then the fashion police get the titles at Money in the Bank. So you don't think they're going to win the Windy Apple? Uh, but they've got the Big momentum. They've got the momentum. Mm-hmm. Um, they have... They have, you know what? All right, fuck it. I'll say I'll say Fashion Police do win the belts. I am totally in agreement with you. Yeah, at the very least, the match. And and all right, Brandon's asking us a very important question, very relevant question in the chat room. Can anyone understand what the Users are saying? Uh, no. The answer to that is no. Well, the, well, yeah, The Rock, but he's not there. <laughs> they they do it for The Rock. They do they it do for, it the, for people. the people. Um. I, I don't even understand their shirt. No. I'm not I'm not sure if the shirt I know I've said this before. I don't care. It's still a, a solid question. I don't know if their shirt is supposed to mean day one ish, like like they're together since about day one since they're twins. Mm-hmm. Or if it's like on that day one ish, like ish being used for shit. Shit. Which yeah. which I don't think they should really allow on a television program. Well, they allow a lot of things on WWE shirts. Not recently. In, in this era. Not recently. Last kicker. Yeah, but that's just ass kicker. For males to wear. Okay, they pulled that one. <laughs> they pulled that true. one. Though. That, okay, that okay. Was, but, but it was still a thing. It was still for, a thing for that a happened. hot second. For a hot second. But you couldn't even buy that shirt. But hey, great. I, but great. Hey, I, I don't think I do, you can buy the day one ish shirt. I don't think you can either. But I, I do give them credit for still having the men's sizes. I'm not like most girls shirt. Hey, you know what? Gender is fluid now. Riz. Is, that's, it's, that's, it's 2017. That's I, I, that's, I know. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, with I'm the with times, that. I'm Riz. fine with that. <laughs> Let's get just with not, the times. Just not the day one ish shit shirts. Yeah. Which, by the way, if you buy a Uso shirt, although kind of weird. Although the the segment tonight, day one is H. What does that mean? What does that mean, Riz? <laughs> that means Triple H is probably going to win. Yeah, probably. Which means the NXT guys will win. So Good Triple job. H Triple H agrees with us. Uh, Fashion Police are going to win. Mm-hmm. And by the way, um, we'll get to this in my, in my prediction for the main event, but I'll get to you why I think the Fashion Police could win. So uh, what's the next match, Riz? Uh, let's go to another interesting match. Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles for the United States Championship. Ah, the face of America versus the gay community. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Gender is fluid now. Gender is fluid. Um, um, this is tough. Uh, I'm still going to say Kevin Owens. Yeah, just okay. because I want, just because I want to see a Kevin Owens versus Nakamura or Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. Or hey, hey Riz, Riz, what if it's a four way? Kevin Owens, Nakamura, Ooh. Ziggler, and Styles. Mm. I can see that. I can see that. Oh, they, all right. hold, on, hold, on, keep... hold on. Breaking news. Mm-hmm. Breaking news. Brandon answered something that you and I were talking about in the pre-show that was not aired because we're idiots. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. First, what Rusev, was the Rusev tweeted he was at the hockey game tonight. That's why he wasn't on SmackDown. So Rusev wow. values the lives of the Nashville Predators 
over a potential title match at Money in the Bank. And honestly, I got to say he's correct on that. He's correct. But um, if the WWE is going to punish him for that, CM Punk has been doing it for years. Yes, but um, has CM Punk ever had a wife that was a professional wrestler? Yes. While in WWE? Uh, well, ah, yeah. yeah. No, he didn't. No, he didn't, sir. By the way, did he do anything with that yet? I think they're going to wait till he comes back. Okay. So they're not, they're probably not going to do like the weird stripper angle. No, I think thing. they are. Oh, great. I think they are. I think they're just not going to acknowledge that she was with him. Ah. Either that, or they're just going to say that. Like, uh, Rusev is going to be like, I support Lana in her endeavors. Like, <laughs> smack mm-hmm. them women's style. And then Lana comes out and she's not Russian anymore. She's actually the, like, she speaks the regular she's, tone. She's CJ Perry. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much. <laughs> Anyways, AJ Styles versus. Yes, AJ <laughs> Styles versus KO. Uh, I, I, un- I, unless I they're the trying to. Half hour. I want this match to yeah. be a half hour, Riz. I can't wait for this match. Unless they're they're building up to Orton versus uh, Owens. I want Owens to keep the title for as long as he can. Because this is amazing. Yeah. Until, um, yeah. until Fozzie comes back. I mean, until Fozzie. Until I'm okay with that. Back. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Owens is winning. Owens is winning. I, I, they wouldn't put the belt, they wouldn't take it off him, then put it back on him if he wasn't going to beat AJ Styles. I don't think anyone. Mm-hmm. But it's gonna be a great match. It's gonna be awesome. I, um, I can't wait to see the pop up power bomb reversal into a phenomenal form. <laughs> and um, uh, oh. speaking, speaking of T- CM Punk, Tina has some breaking news for us in the chat room. Um, CM Punk is going to be on a new TV show, Riz. Do you want to guess what it is without looking at the chat? Blocked. No. No, I don't, um, I don't think that's a show. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It's not... Is it? Is it? It's, not okay, the candy, it's not the Candy Crush show that's apparently happening. Okay. In real life. Are, they, are they renewing uh, Bully Beatdown? Nope. I, I will give you another hint. A current Raw superstar has been on this show before. Many, many years ago. Dancing with the Stars? Nope. No. Further back than that. What? Uh huh. All right, I'll just tell you. Yeah. CM Punk is going to be on the new season of MTV's The Challenge. What the fuck is the challenge? <laughs> I assume it's like a real world road rules challenge show. No. Apparently. Oh. Uh, oh, is that the one it. with like uh pros versus some... pros versus Joes? Yeah, isn't something like, <laughs> isn't it like something like that? And then watch watch CM Punk get his ass beat. I'd again. rather watch CM Punk get, like play rock and jock hockey. Yeah. Why is it rock? Why? All right, this is a complete sidebar from everything. Why isn't rock and jock still a thing? Because I believe celebrities got hurt doing that. Really? Ah, mm-hmm. uh, I I miss rock and jock. Fucking Dan Cortez launching twenty point threes. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. That shit was the best. Do you think we'd see WWE do something like that? Ooh, I would love that shit. Are you kidding me? Like just oh. big show, just big show standing on like have big show and Braun on different sides of the of the uh, of the of the court. No, and... no, 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 Riz, Riz. I get. I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. Mm-hmm. Big Show versus Stephen Amell in a salmon ladder race. Okay. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Like I, I want all of this. Yes. Forget forget a third season of Swerved. Give me WWE Rock and Jock. That or WWE Ninja Warrior. I, I think that's already called 205 Live. This, oh, Randy. <laughs> yeah, Tina says we can add to WrestleMania weekend. And right. I wholeheartedly agree. 
good. That's a, that, that will be a nice that will be a nice little piece to access. WD yes. access. Absolutely. Um, Anyways, we we picked we we, we all picked. We yeah, picked uh, we both th- we both said Kevin Owens. Okay, yeah. And now the weirdest thing I've thought I'd ever say bef- since Great Collie winning the world title. Is that is that racist? Since this is, a little bit. It's is Jinder Mahal in this one too? A little bit. A little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Randy Orton versus Jinder Mahal. <laughs> It's let, weird. Let's, it's... Stress the, let's stress the important part here for the WWE championship. <laughs> let's let's stress the important part. Can here. can we go, can we run down the list of this card again? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Morda versus Dolph Ziggler. Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles. They both have to go on before Randy Orton versus Jinder Mahal. <sighs> This is and where we're at. Thing. And here's the thing. I don't care. I ain't mad about it. I'm not mad. Like, I ain't mad. Like the way they're doing this is what they need to do for everything. Make me believe Jinder Mahal is going to win. Right. Make me believe that Breeze and this is the same thing with the tag match. Make me believe that the fashion police well, can win. It's a lot easier to make someone believe that a tag team can win a match. But it still, is, it is a lot easier to to. But make still, Mister Flippy, no fun. Doesn't we'll, like. We'll get into that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get definitely get into that. But uh, to see him get, get upset by Jinder Mahal, the jacked Maha, Maharaja. Maharaja. Yeah, um, is just going to be one of the top moments of WWE this year. <laughs> and I'm and I'm sad to say it's not going to happen now. Oh, okay, you're you're thinking Orton. I'm I'm kind of leaning Orton after like I I don't I don't think WWE has that wow like that that Mick Foley moment yet. Okay. Like okay. I don't think I don't think Jinder Mahal is the new Mick Foley. Where you know that'll put butts in the seats, but I would not be opposed to see that happen. Okay, well, I think it's going to happen, Riz. I think it's going to happen, and this this is partially why I also picked Brizongo to uh, to win the tag titles. Mm-hmm. Because I think you have, I think Jinder Mahal is the new coming of JBL. I really think he is. I know they've said it a few times, but I really think it's going to happen. Um, because SmackDown desperately needs some kind of direction. Mm-hmm. Um, they're called the land of opportunity. I think Jinder Mahal winning the belt kind of cements that. And plus, okay. after that, you have money in the bank. And Ooh. you need you need a heel champion if you have a money in the bank person on SmackDown, hmm. uh, at least with given who I think is going to win money in the bank this year. That's and, and plus um, you can give the Bollywood boys a tag title match at money in the bank. So they will be the Bollywood Bashams and they'll have the tag straps and gender will have the world strap. Okay. I like it. I, I, I like really, it. I really, really think he's going to do it, but, I also think that we've been through this before where Randy Orton's just going to double DDT, do his double DDT to the Sings. Uh-huh. And just when he when the when Mahal does his finisher, he will do the RKO and win. Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I think I think this is Ginger's time. Which is I the weirdest is thing you have ever said on this podcast? That is a lie. I've I have said much weirder things. Weirder things directed towards a wrestling show. Okay, that's fair. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, Tina also says, um, "For shits and giggles, have Maria Canales and Mike Bennett appear at Backlash." Mm. I think they will appear. 
However, I think it will be on a different show. Takeover. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I keep, I keep I, on forgetting the takeover. I had a little cough, but yeah, I think they're going to be they're going to be a takeover. Yeah. I, I think I think that takeover, might very well be a real thing. Takeover is the place where you see people that WWE just signed. Like mm-hmm. like when uh when Asuka was signed. When Asuka was there, when Bobby Roode was there, when mm-hmm. Drew Drew McIntyre came back recently, he was there. Mm-hmm. They all, all just stood guys. there for one sh- one full one minute segment. <laughs> and then just left. Well but they're yeah. usually they're usually there for like half a match beforehand. Yeah, that's true. They're usually but there yeah, for um, he, he he's they're gonna show up then on NXT. Ah, and okay. Uh, maybe Adam Cole might eat too. I was gonna say the chat room is blowing up right now. Uh, Brandon says that Orton has to win. That he's the John Cena. I don't, I don't think right he. Now. Well, I don't think he has to win. He's. I feel like he's going to win, but he doesn't have to win. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if we are calling Randy Orton the John Cena of SmackDown, that means he doesn't have to win. Yeah. That means because he can literally he can to... literally win it back at any time. Exactly. Yeah, but I I think, especially with Rusev, like if it's not this time, it's gonna be Money in the Bank. So I think we're eventually going to get Jinder Mahal as the champion. And, and whether weirdest weirdest thing we've said. Yeah. No, I th- I really think it's gonna happen. Um, mm-hmm. Tina thinks that they're going that Adam Cole might be at Takeover. He she, might. Says a, she says a certain someone might be there, baby. I'm, I'm assuming that's Adam Cole. You never know. It could, and could be. If I'm not um, mistaken, he, tonight. Like, I don't know. Let me see if I remember this correctly. I think the JT Lightning show is on, on Saturday. Yeah, but isn't he in Super Indy? He's also in Super Indy. That's in June. So, But I, I believe it, the the JT, like the JT uh, Lightning Invitational's a three day tournament or a two day tournament, mm-hmm. and he's he's scheduled to be here at night two. Well, I mean, so he if, might... if the Hardys can work one liar match on Saturday night and one liar match on a Sunday night, I'm pretty sure Adam Cole can sit in a crowd <laughs> for ten minutes. Um, but yet, yeah, uh, Brandon, as far as we know, Money in the Bank is a SmackDown Live exclusive pay per view. As it far is. as we know, whether or not they actually run the match as a SmackDown exclusive pay per view, like a SmackDown exclusive match, that I don't know. I would like it to be like cross brand. I think that'd be cool. But who the hell True. knows? But then again, with Brock Lesnar, um, Raw being the Universal Champion, being away for umpteen amounts of time, like balls money, of fire. Yeah, like Money in the Bank doesn't work on that show as a concept. So, mm-hmm. who knows? Um, all right, so Riz, I think that's it for Backlash, right? That is, that is it for Backlash right now. Are we excited about the show? Yes. Okay, me too. Because because of the unknown. Yeah, because SmackDown definitely seems like the unknown. fresher show. Mm-hmm. I- I'll say this, I feel a hell of a lot more excited for Backlash than I do for Extreme Rules. I f- it, that's that is correct. Okay, <laughs> that, that is one hundred percent correct. Because the match that you wanted to see on on at Extreme Rules is not happening anymore. I don't even know if I want to see it that much. <laughs> uh, come on, the Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman match, an Extreme Rules match, probably an ambulance match. Amber Lamps match, I should say, would have been amazing. And yeah, you know until it. until Roman won. Mm-hmm. <laughs> until Roman won, I said this last night on Twitter, and I got—I don't know who was running the Mayhem Twitter account last night, but I said all three members of the Shield need to take like six months off. Yeah, no, you know what? You're right. You're right. I think I, all I think all three of them just need to leave, go away. Just go away for a little while because now they're all on Raw and they're all up in my fucking face. I don't like Dean as much. Yeah. He Dean's stale. 
Yeah. He's more he's staler. He's the stalest of the three, actually. That's including Roman Reigns. Yeah, I'll agree with that. I'll agree. And with he's that. the only one who's a champion right now, by the way. Well, he's stale when he is a champion. This is true. And that's when when the Miz brought that up uh, when I think it was a couple of nights ago, a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. He blew me away when he said that. Because it's true. Like when he was the United States champion, he barely defended that shit. Yep. When he's the Intercontinental Champion, when has he defended that? Hey, hey Riz, do you even remember that Dean Ambrose was the WWE champion? Eesh. No. He was the WWE champion during the draft. Oh my good <laughs> Wow. <laughs> And he was taken second. Yep. That's that's my point exactly. He was taken after Seth Rollins. Yep. That's my point exactly. Because they had a match for the WWE title. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's my point exactly. But then... Uh, do you repackage them then? Or do you just... I think you just have them all take six months off... And you have them come back as the shield for SummerSlam or no, Survivor Series. Survivor Series. Yeah, that's what I meant. You have them all come back for a Survivor Series, and you just run a six man like you just have them attack someone beforehand, like a like a Balor Club. Mm. That's what you do. That's what you do. You have you get Balor to you know talk to his buddies and say, hey, listen, the the. Like, he goes to Anderson and Gallows. He's like, hey, listen, guys. The reason you're not, you know, really taking over Raw, you haven't fully embraced my new Balor Club, the WWE Universe. You turn them face. You make the Balor Club face. You make that shit work. And then you have a heel shield come back around October to beat them the fuck down. Hmm. That's that's what I do. That's what I do because, oh man, all three of them need to go away. All three of them need to go away for a little while. Hmm. Yep, they just gotta go away because the WWE has a hard on for the Shield still, and we're not gonna get any new stars until they get pushed down the roster a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I see that. I see that. Yeah, Tina says Balor Club. Uh, they can they can go for when uh, Finn goes up against Lesnar. That's mm-hmm. perfect. That's he, awesome. You can use them as backup. That'd be that'd be amazing. Ah, uh, I mean, it, it's just like just seeing. I like the I like Seth Rollins. I do. I, I like Seth and Rollins I, too. I, but. I, but Every single match he's in, what happens during that match? Joe! No. No, no, no. I'm not even talking about that. <laughs> okay. I'm not even talking about that. He I'm talking about... Yes. <laughs> he, he's, nah. pulling the, he's pulling the DDP angle, except and, it was, it's not his ribs. It's his knee. And I don't know if it's like real or if his knee's really that loose in there or if it's good storytelling or if he came back too early it's just like just take it easy make make it make it easy for yourself man and maybe, and maybe don't make your new finisher a knee strike by the way <laughs> uh that is the that is the uh the the the, the adopted son of uh knee arthur and uh the rainmaker move and the tony niece Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Tony niece. All right. Uh, so, Riz, before before we get into um, Mr. Randall Keith Orton, mm-hmm. um, hey, Riz, what, yes. what, did you, what did you have for dinner tonight? I'm not even going to joke here. Mm-hmm. I actually did have pizza. But, Riz, I bet it wasn't as good a pizza as you could have had. It was not. Hold on one minute. Where... where Riz, do you know where the best pizza you can have ever is from? The best pizza that you can ever have hmm. 
as long as you're in the greater Pittsburgh area. Slice on Broadway. Slice on Broadway, Riz. Slice on Broadway. Uh, so, yeah, they have three different places. Uh, on Broadway. Mm-hmm. In... Oh, I'm going to blank on this name. It's so bad. They have... Well, they have one in Carnegie as well. Carnegie. Go on. Carnegie. And they also have one at PNC Park where you can watch the Pittsburgh Pirates play. You can watch the Pittsburgh Pirates play with the perfect pepperoni pizza after podcasting. It's good pizza, and there's still plenty of seats available. (laughs) I I, I take it the Pirates aren't doing so well, Riz. No. no, All right, but but Riz, Riz, now now I have a question, Riz. Mm -hmm. You know what makes a baseball team underperforming feel so much better? Pizza. Lots of pizza. Lots of pizza. Stuff in your face with pepperoni pie. Pepperoni pizza. Uh, the Gonzo is pretty good. Uh, when I had our little, when I had a meeting with uh, somebody, I went, you know what? I'm gonna have the uh, steak and cheese pizza, and they made a steak and cheese pizza for you, and it was a brilliant idea because they put all the toppings on it, the 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 steak, the the, the onions, the peppers, everything else. They put it all on that pizza. And it was delicious, and you can have it. And if you don't, if you don't see a pizza on there, but you see a hoagie that you like, and say, you know what, that hoagie looks good with in pizza form. They will make it for you, Riz. That that's amazing. It see, is. we don't just promote pepperoni pizza. We pr- we say pepperoni pizza because we all like alliteration. Who doesn't? And everyone likes to pop the peas when they're on the microphone. Yes. But just but slice on pizza, slice on Broadway. Get any kind of pizza you want. Mm, hell, tell them like, the, tell them the mayhem show sent you. They will not you, know mean, what that means. But if, still no, no, they'll they'll know what you mean. Like okay. like when I went over there and they were like, oh, you're from the mayhem show. We're like, yeah, we're we're pretty cool. And we had our own little booth in the back. It was awesome. So we we didn't really do that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, even if you want to get pineapple pizza, but pineapple. Um, no, pineapple no, Hold on. Don't do that. Do it. Nope, don't do it. Do it and watch their heads explode. Don't, don't, do not. Riz, Riz, we're doing, we, we're having a nice ad here. I don't want to, I don't want to break it up by, by you talking about abominations. But please, mm. world. Pineapple and pizza? Let, let's just stop doing that. But you, know where, but you know where pineapple and pizza is good? Probably the only place in the Milky Way galaxy that can make pineapple on pizza delicious. Slice on Broadway. Exactly. It's the only place you're allowed. The only place. That's it. That's well, there are it. only three places. Well, the only the only chain of pizzerias. Yes. Slice on Broadway. Anywhere else, not allowed. Exactly. At least get a pepperoni and pineapple pizza, because you gotta pop the peas. Pepperoni pineapple sounds disgusting, by the way. <laughs> but they can make it there. All right, and, and Tina Tina agrees that pineapple and pizza is great. Tina, you're in Seattle. You don't actually know what pizza is. Uh, no, yeah, nobody asks you, Tina. <laughs> Pizzas. Tina's like, get me some Starbucks and a pizza. Starbucks on pizza. That's... Let me go catch this fish. <laughs> All right, Riz. Enough. Yes. Enough about pizza. Um, I have a question for you. Do you, ha- Randy Orton, is it's a guy? A dick. Do Do you have what what Randy Orton talked about this week? Because we uh, we need to get. Into this. So let me see here. I'm trying to find it. I believe it's on our Facebook group too. Oh, is it on the Facebook group? I believe it is. Yes. Is it on? Whoa, that's on the Google. Let me see here. Yeah, I believe here. I believe it is on our Facebook group. I'm gonna look for it. Uh, this is Randy Orton is a kind of a douche. Yeah. Uh, and it's just loading and it's not working really well, but. Let's see. Let me see. If okay. I can find his actual tweet. Oh, you're gonna find the actual tweet. Okay. I'm gonna find the but, actual tweet. There is a is, there is a bit of a discussion this. about this going on the Facebook group, but where is this find the actual tweet? Was it was the tweet deleted? Um 
I thought the tweet was deleted. <laughs> the the tweet was deleted. So uh, so uh, we're in the order pretty much said. Well, uh, yeah, Jesse, have... Jesse, yeah, I have it. Jesse yeah. in our Facebook group <clears throat> posted the whole thing. Um, which, by the way. If this is really from Randy Orton's home, which I assume it is, he needs to charge his battery. Oh, are you reading the uh, the apology? I'm. I'm re- oh, is that the apology? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did not see the actual tweet. Then I've okay. only seen All right. the apology. All right, I, I want to read this because th- this is the best part of it, though. Well, hold on, hold on. I will find the actual tweet. Um, mm-hmm. because I thought that that was just. The actual tweet, and he did one of those things where, um, you know, where where you don't want to do a thread on Twitter, so you write something in a notebook, and then you just post a picture of that. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, he just he just wrote dive. Oh yeah. Okay. So Rip Rogers, who's uh at hustler two seven five four. <clears throat> said every indie match now handshake drawn out more drawn out move exchange this is awesome chance strike exchange dive no sell indie strong style dive more strikes no sells dive flippy flippy floppy sequence dive hit everyone with e- each other's finishers then humpty dumpty we all fall down fight forever chant rinse repeat until every move is useless and means nothing. Dive, take unsa- unsafe shots that looks that looks like shit and he- hurts like hell. Then roll up, finish, handshake, and hug it after every match. Everyone's hands raised, and and these guy, all these guys chant. Go home and type on social media thanking your opponents and company for the match, and telling others. They should book other these uh, these guys. Dot 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 dot. Dive. Wow. Okay. Um, I hadn't seen that until just now. Um. While I don't necessarily disagree with a lot of that sentiment. Um, I'm also gonna say fuck Rick Rogers, whoever that is. No, you know, I, he he's a he's a he's a like he's a big time worker back in the day. But oh, yeah, okay. So and so Orton just re just reposted this basically. He, yeah, he just reposted that, and uh, and then he he posted his apology like a few time few minutes after that. After okay. that, now, after because this is the only thing I saw initially, so this is because so... he also quoted uh, the 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 image of Bubba Ray doing a dive. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rip Rogers was also the head trainer at OVW. Uh, nobody cares. Well, no, Tina nobody... was telling us in the chat room who's who Rip Rogers was. And then he he well he quoted the uh, Bubba Ray Dudley pick as. There's a difference between a young, hungry talent diving and an old, out of shape vet falling. <laughs> okay, that's fair. That's that was funny though. I that's like fair. That, I like that. Um, but the apology reads as as such. Sorry to the indie marks, indie guys, and the old timers who who do dives took offense. Just having a good time over a few drinks in Denmark, closing the SmackDown live tour. You know he has to be a dick about that. You know, uh, while beating Raw and making over five million dollars in the last eleven shows. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I don't. I don't see how the. I don't see how that. It doesn't. It does it, not. It doesn't. It doesn't mean anything. Continue. What? What's? Now, just read the rest of his. Then we'll go through it. Yeah. Now I know some. I know to some. That doesn't equate to a standing room only crowd of 150 people paying eight dollars at an armory somewhere. But in this big boy world, that's called putting asses in seats. Okay. So enjoy your flips, dives, and 20 super kick matches. 
to each their own, I will go dive back into my 13th title run and get ready to flip when my bank account, my bank statement comes this month. Headlock. Okay. Now I can also safely say, again, while I don't necessarily disagree with a lot of the aforementioned statements, fuck Randy Orton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I do give him credit for this one. Uh, the last tweet that he that he has on his Facebook or on his Twitter account right now is a retweet of Drew Gulak, and they're both standing by by his no fly zone no sign. Fly zone, yeah, of course. That that is a good way to just I, you know squash no, it. No, you know you know what that is. Hmm. That's corporate synergy right there. That is. That's what the fuck that is. That that <laughs> is. That, that's a de- that's a that's the funniest thing he's ever said. Potentially. Yes, but yeah, fuck Randy Orton. I, I I don't get I don't get how like don't tell fans that you are a champion of. By the way, what to think and feel? Well, it's not even that. It's just. It, <sighs> You it's can't, you can't go you can't go to an indie show and say that every match is that first of all because yeah, it it's not it's not it is not really like even Ring of Honor that I've accused Ring of Honor do, of doing that a lot mm-hmm. that's not every Ring of Honor match like and plus it because of some of the people Randy Orton is going to be working with now same that same. those things exist. Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, AJ Styles, Kevin Owens, Shinsuke Nakamura. We can we can run down this list. Dolph Ziggler. Dolph freaking Ziggler. Yeah, like, like I don't like the the reason. Like I I, I make it out to be such as they they do they they take chances because the main goal in life is to go to WWE. Mm-hmm. Like, as an 80s kid, I can probably say that the main goal in the lives of... The, the lives of the young, young, young bucks, like the very, very, like my generation in the 80s, young version of the young bucks. So the hardest. Was, oh, yeah, even them. <laughs> So the Hardys, no, like no, like the younger versions of themselves, were to be in WWE. Now, obviously, they turn that around into doing something that promotes themselves and promotes brands outside of WWE and outside of TNA. They got themselves into hot topic. They got themselves That's into everywhere. No, but I mean, like their shit is gonna be selling a hot topic. Them and Kenny Omega, they like, won just them, not New Japan, like, just the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. That they is are, they won already. Impressive. That is that that is brand building. And you know what move they do constantly? Don't say super kicks. Super kicks. Now, that having been said, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of the Young Bucks. No. I'm not like I, I, I will. If I watch one Young Bucks match every three months, that's great for me. That's what about great. a Generation Me match? Fuck you. <laughs> I, no, I don't. But, I, like, I don't think they even watch Generation Me matches anymore. No one watched Generation Me matches, but uh, but like I can see what where they're coming from. I can mm-hmm. absolutely see that. However, on the flip side, if you watch ah. every rant, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> See? See, I did it. I did it. And now let's dive right back into what I was saying. Yeah. Uh, Randy Orton, take heart into knowing that you, in, in your 13 title runs of glory, have never mm-hmm. and will never hear a fight forever chant because all of your matches fucking take forever. Hey, hey, 
Randy, uh, I was at the Royal Rumble in Pittsburgh. You got booed out of the building against the guy that you fought forever with. Yeah, I mean, and uh, Tina is saying that uh, in the chat that she's saying it's looking down on the fans in a sense. It's it is. No, it, it absolutely is. is. Because and there are certain fans that will chant those things just to chant them and get themselves over. We understand and acknowledge that. However, there are certain matches where people genuinely just enjoy that stuff. Like, like, like when the fight forever chant for Sammy and Nakamura happened, that was organic. That was just because those guys were having a really great match. The greatest match of last year was Kenny Omega versus uh, Okada. Disagree, but go on. That match lasted thirty minutes, and all they did was beat. Well, all they did was. Most of the things that was that was uh, retweeted by Mr. Orton, like the there was flips, there was jumps to the outside, there was a fight forever chant, there was fans on their feet because you know why? Because that match was entertaining to the masses. Mm-hmm. That match, what like, you, Mad Mike, you may not like it. It may not have been the best one for, but to the majority of the people that a were in that building. B, we're watching it on New Japan Pro Wrestling. I was. I watched it live. And that also might have been why I didn't like it as much because it was 6 a.m. at that point. This is is pretty (laughs) much it. And C, people who heard about it all wanted now to see that match because of how awesome that match was being told. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that match was bad. Far from it. I just mm-hmm. thought there were better matches, i.e., Revival versus DIY. Mm-hmm. Personal preference. That's which, my personal by the way, preference. which by the way also featured feature, featured plenty of flips, plenty of dives, dives, and you know what? False even, finishes, even a few headlocks. Yeah, even a few headlocks. <laughs> um, uh, Tina saying in the chat room, indie guys have more hustle, shilling out their merch on their own, not behind mm-hmm. a corporate machine. And can Randy say that the same? I don't think Randy Orton has ever had to sell his own merch. No, he hasn't. Like I don't think even like when they had the the stuff in OVW, like they didn't sell their own merch. That was all OVW doing it, right? Right. That yeah. was that was mostly WWE OVW. Like, could, could you imagine seeing Randy Orton standing by by a merch table and say, "Hey, kids, you want my shirt with this gas mask on it? Why is there a gas mask on it? I'm not sure. Oh, but no. It says RKO. Isn't that pretty cool? It's like my move, guys. Where are you guys yeah, going? Yeah, it's like a gas mask, right? Where Where are you guys going? Why are you going over to the uh, to the to uh, the prototype over there? Why are you going over there? Come on, come back." <laughs> Don't talk to the prototype. He's dangerous. What are you guys doing? Why? Why are you guys going to Levi- Leviathan? It's not like he's going to be a Marvel superhero in about thirteen and a half years. Oh gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, because I, I like, and I've said before, like, I Ring of Honor is not my jam. It's not like there's mm-hmm. some great stuff in Ring of Honor. I like a lot of the people in Ring of Honor, but. Watching Ring of Honor every week, I think I would get tired of it. Of personally, course. because I don't know what anyone's finisher in Ring of Honor is because they never work ever. Well, they have to work no, like I mean, three times. Yeah, you have That's to do role. every finisher three times. It's like if I want that, I'll just play the fucking WWE game. <laughs> and here here's where here here's where we have come to. You have your likes and dislikes I have mine people in the chat room have different likes and dislikes that we have Rain Orton might have different likes and dislikes that he has but to disrespect like uh, I'm not gonna say he disrespect the fans because that's not true he, he 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 didn't disrespect the fans I don't think as much as he disrespected more the workers. the people yeah the people Rip, who Rip are Rogers busting dis- his ass. Rip Rogers disre- disrespected the fans. I don't think Randy echoed that part of the sentiment. And and it goes to show you that 
the people who worked the 80s and early 90s should shut the fuck up on Twitter. Well, no, I mean, it's not like they're not entitled to their own opinion. They're entitled to their own yeah, opinion. They are. Too. They are. But, but we're also allowed to say, ha ha, it's just because you couldn't do it. Exactly. That's it's exactly what it is. Because like, like, if you watch any, like, there's only maybe three or four big names from the 80s that I can think of that didn't have the same match over and over again. There's Rick only about Steamboat. three or four guys I can think. Uh, Ricky Steamboat. Mm-hmm. Randy Savage, mm-hmm. um, Rick Rude. Okay. Rick Rick Rude had different matches, and and Mr. Perfect. Oh, 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 five. Jake Roberts. Yes. Jake Roberts. Never, never the same Jake Roberts match. Mm-hmm. Never the same Jake Roberts match because Jake understood psychology a lot better than most of the people today do. But um, like if you, like I could post the same exact message and instead of saying dive flip stuff like that i can say headlock arm drag takeover atomic drop elbow stomp to gut sharpshooter that's every bret hart match i'm sorry that's every single one of them oh and side yeah. russian leg sweep that's every bret hart match you can say flop flop kick to leg kick to leg chop 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 chop, chop. Woo, chop, 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 woo, chop, 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 fall off the top rope, kick to leg, stomp to leg, figure four, break out, figure four again, reversal, break out, figure four, tap, 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 woo. That's every Ric Flair match. This is true. And uh, God, Hogan's even worse. Punch, 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 kick, punch, punch, mm-hmm. punch. Low blow, probably. Punch, punch. Atomic drop, punch. Slam, punch, no, punch. You forgot. Oh, attempted slam. Hurt my back. Punch, punch. Whip, boot, leg, boom. You for, you forgot you forgot uh, comeback. I, I, you forgot I, just, I just didn't even feel like putting it in there. Everyone okay. knows. Everyone yeah, knows the everybody, has, everybody has their thing. Everybody he, has he a good point. Dusty. Dusty is also a good one. Didn't have the same match over. Dusty him. didn't have the same finish. Yeah, yeah. I, but, I, I was more of a, which, I was which, more of a WWE guy, not an NWA kid. So, which is also funny because he does have a finish named after Dusty. That's <laughs> true. Which is That's which true. happened multiple times in WCW. Yes, but, with uh, Dusty. Yeah, but um, I mean, it, we're we're entitled to like our own things, and I I don't get. Like, like, man, Mike, you wouldn't. I don't know if you would like Shakara or not. I it, see. The thing is, I've been to Shakara. I've been to King of Trios. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. In well, small doses, I think I would very much like Shakara. <laughs> I don't know if I'd like a weekly program of that. Yeah, like it. With that, it it, it wrestling is like fine wine. Don't tell people how to drink fine wine. But you know what I do like that has a lot of flips and a lot of dives, Riz. Lucha fucking underground. Exactly. And do you know why I like it, Riz? It's not necessarily because, because the flips it's, of the dives. Because it's because entertaining. Because of the storylines behind it. Because you're entertained by it. Yes. And that's the thing that, that Randy Orton se- and Rip seem to not... Well, Randy Orton, Rip Rogers, uh, Vince Russo, Jim Cornette, they <laughs> all seem to have the same theory that if you don't if you if you like wrestling you like their version of wrestling or else you don't like wrestling yeah period Mm -hmm. moving on yeah it's funny because riz when i live tweet about tna okay i get called a wwe mark Uh uh-huh and when i do the raw report i get called a wwe hater isn't that fantastic it's it's amazing. It might even be by the same people. <laughs> I'm not sure. But all right. Uh, so anyway, let, let's move on, Riz. Um, to let's. the bi- to the big question. Okay. The big question. Uh, now we're going to talk about something in a little bit. Riz, you saw the trailer for Glow on Netflix, right? I 
did, and Mark Marin looks amazing in it. Okay, all right. I also saw. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but before we get to that, the mm-hmm. big question is, Riz, if you could make any wrestling themed show on Netflix, what kind of show would you make? I would make more of a kind of like what Lucha Underground is, but more scripted. Like me, I would make it more of a Shikara type show with fighting ants, fighting hawks, fighting sea monsters, stuff like that. Just make it obscure. So basically, you want you want a crossover show mm-hmm. between Chikara, Lucha Underground, and Mid South, uh, not Mid South, um, Southpaw, S- Southpaw Chip, Southpaw, Southpaw Regional Wrestling. Wrestling. Yes. yes, of course. Okay, so like, that's... I, just, I just want like like that to be one of the biggest comedies they have had. Did you hear that they found more footage? No, I did not. John Cena has said that they have somehow found more footage. I mean, how? What? What are they going to do? I mean, they I, were I, ruined. I, they were I ruined. From, they are Betamax tapes. They were ruined with Lethal Leap Year. No, they without it being a leap year. Riz, we don't know that. We don't know that, and this might be before then. Plus, who's who? Who has these tapes? Is it Chet? Uh, all right. Is it Chet? All right. Riz, I didn't want to tell you this. I worked at WWE. Oh. Uh huh. Um. There was a secret excavating team. The reason we were in a tiny building in Stanford, Connecticut, is because there was a rumor that deep under the belly of that building, very, very much similar to Indiana Jones. Mm hmm. There was a hidden tape library. Ooh. Yes. Um, Were you allowed in there? I may have been. I may have been. I Riz, if I say any more, I'll violate the NDA. So I can't say any more. Did they did they have to like Riz, I can't cover your anymore. face? Riz, I can't say any more. I can't say any more. All I will say is that I may have had to lose an appendage. Oh. I'm not going to say where. I'm not going to say what. But the count may be down. Oh no! No, I'm not. I'm not saying. All right, all right. I'll say it. I don't have a middle toe, Riz. I don't have a middle toe. That Ooh. was the. That was the. That was the. That was what you had to give up. That's actually. Entry. That's actually not that bad because I know. I know. And that's that's like, what I figured. It's like uh, any cartoon that you see. Or they have like three fingers. I'm I'm part Ninja Turtle now. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. All right. So anyway, Anyways, but yeah, that's what I that's what I want to have. Like, ha- still have maybe like, well, have act have action in it, of course, mm-hmm. but have more of the storyline base that Lucha Underground, Shikara, and others had. That's all. Mad okay. Mike. Yeah. What is your, what is your answer for this question? I want a wrestling sit- sitcom. It's kind of the same, but I no, guess no, 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 no. I want a wrestling like I want like wings. Very similar, no, not like wings. Kind of like Seinfeld. Like you know how every episode of Seinfeld opened with a uh, Jerry doing a stand-up bit. Yeah, but then he goes home and he talks and he interacts with his friends. I want to follow the journey of a wrestler, or preferably maybe a wrestler and a manager who are married in real life. And they go home from there, mm-hmm. and they go to the grocery store. And they have to be heels. They have to be very despicable characters because then oh. they see people in real life, and they're like, oh, did you really spit on the Canadian flag on your program? Like, mm-hmm. stuff like that. And they have to respond but, to that in a day-to-day life. I feel like that show, like, that's a kind of show that we can have on Netflix. And you can mm-hmm. give 13 episodes to this. And I think it'd be really a lot of fun. Like, like they wanted to do the gra- the Glamorella thing back mm. in the day where Kozlov was their weird neighbor. Like, 
when I heard that was a rumor, I was so excited for that because I think those people could have pulled that off. Okay, I I see I see your uh, wrestler manager connection, and I raise you one. Okay. Perfect strangers tag team. That can be they can be their neighbors. Or or like I was thinking more of like odd couple y type shenanigans with mm-hmm. that. Having, you know, the clean, neat freak wrestler with <laughs> okay. OCD and have the not giving a shit wrestler that just goes around doing knocking over stuff. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm picturing Dean Ambrose and like oh. in English? No, 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 because they have to be on the same show. Oh. I'm picturing Dean Ambrose and let's say Bo Dallas. Yeah. 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 Let's say Bo Dallas. I that you know, you're onto something with that, Riz. You're onto something with that. Um Brandon said a How I Met Your Mother wrestling show. How I I'm Met not Your Manager? Sure. How I Met Your Mother. Like Yeah, I know I know, but I'm trying to think of I'm I'm not sure Is it, is it like going through the whole uh, the whole process of Macho Date, Man finding It Ms. could Elizabeth? be like dating someone in the business. That could be really interesting. That could be really interesting. But but like you're feuding with each other. Mm. That oh, that could be really interesting. Like CM Punk and AJ. And uh, Tina Tina says that for your odd couple, you could have Dean and Finn. I don't know if that necessarily works because I assume Finn is the type of guy that leaves Legos on the floor. But he, but he also doesn't. He also watches his carbs. This oh, oh wheels wheels may have hit the money load on this one. Are, are, you saying, are you ready? Are you ready are, for this? Are you saying Wheels is leading the way? Wheels is leading the fucking way. Are you ready for this, Riz? I'm, I'm ready for it. Tales from the Crypt with Bray Wyatt. Okay. I I second dig see it. that so much. I just want. Oh my God, Wheels! I love that. If we can reboot Mystery Science Theater three thousand, we can reboot Tales from the Crypt. This is true. With Bray Wyatt just telling interesting stories. This is also very true. Oh man! All right, I I really like that idea. I really really like that idea. Oh right. god! All right, well um, so that's our big question for the week. We we tweeted out. Um, if any of you guys have suggestions, feel free to respond via Twitter. Um, we'll put it in we'll put it in the Facebook group too. So um, all right. So Riz. Hey, hey, Riz, we were talking about indie wrestling before. Uh huh. Do you know where one of the finest sources of indie wrestling is? IndieWrestling.us. That is absolutely correct, Riz. IndieWrestling.us. Right, yeah, jingle. Um, no, no, Riz. Jingle, jangle, jangle. You were talking about a show you went to this week. Yes. Uh, IWC Super Indie. It was amazing. Or, uh, Road Aftershock. Super Indie. Aftershock. Volume two, Road to Super Indie. That was the title of the show. Okay. Uh, and yeah, so big, so many big surprises. Uh, we Bye-bye. have we have an entire list of everybody coming going to Super Indie, including former Super Indie champions, uh, the current Super Indie champion, and. Former contestant on uh, the ROH uh, Young Talent Search thing uh, with Chris uh, Chris Larus- Larusso, uh, and of course the big name Riz, Adam. Do you, do you have the list of all the people that are going to be in Super Indy? I can pull that up for you right now. Excellent. It's, it's amazing. It's Excellent. amazing on who is on this list. And, of course, you go to IndieWrestling.us, and you can see even the top super, uh, top indie wrestlers of the past, like the Cesaros, the... The AJ the Styles, the AJ Matt Hardys that we're just talking about. The, the entire list is amazing. 
Basically, um, if you want to see why Randy Orton and Rip Rogers are wrong, just go to IndieWrestling.us and find everything that you're looking for that proves them wrong. Mm-hmm. Because there's a lot of matches on there. And there's, there's even a lot of matches like with uh, like with one-legged people like uh, um, what am I thinking of his name? Zach Gowan. Zach Gowan. Yes. Zach absolutely. Gowan from Prime and also finding Zach Gowan. Um, you can also watch stuff from RWA, another local local place in Pittsburgh, also in Ohio, and every single place that has professional wrestling. Yes, and I did pull up the actual list. Here we go. It's going that that's not what it is. Where <laughs> there it is. All right. So, like I said, Chris Larusso, Adam Cole, baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, Colt Cabana is going to be there. Boom Boom's going to be there. He was the f- he was in the Scotty first- Goldman himself. I believe he was in the first Super Indie tournament. I believe he was. Yeah. Uh, DJZ, former champion. Burr, 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 burr. By the way, hold on. Mm-hmm. Quick sidebar. Mm-hmm. Holy shit! What a recovery for that man. It it's amazing. that is impressive. He is back wrestling before the set of tapings for Impact that went on without <laughs> him finished. <laughs> That's uh, impressive. Jay White is going to be there. He's a he. he I believe he's a New Japan pro wrestling guy. Oh, okay. Uh, Jonathan Grisham, who was one win away from becoming last year's Super Indie uh, Super Indie Champion when uh, Josh Alexander won it. Sounds Which, like he has redemption on his mind. He does. And by the way, uh, Super Indie One also featured. Super Hentai, Christopher Daniels, CM Punk, Loki, Colt Cabana, Chris Hero, and still in the in IWC scene, CJ Sensation. Oh, awesome CJ Sensation! Oh, mm-hmm. You know, Riz, uh, Riz I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure you can find Super Indie 1 on IndieWrestling.us, right? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Don't quote me on that. But I know there, are, right. other, I know there are other Super Indies on there. You can find anything on on there, but I know, I definitely know Super Indie Six is going to be on is on there, which is one of the very I know the very first one I saw was Super Indie Five with Delirious winning it. Excellent. Which, by the way, feel looked like a weird setup on this one, but that's okay. Anyways, the list continues. By the way, Uh, like I said, Jonathan Grisham, who was one win away. One person who was supposed to be there last year, but didn't because of a crazy man throwing him off a, a giant roof. Joey Janella is supposed to be there. The man who had his own spring break show, I believe, at WrestleMania weekend. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I believe I heard about that show. <clears throat> and also Mike Orlando, who I've seen clips of him. I'm really interested in seeing what this guy can do. Okay. He's Excellent. very strong, but yeah. If you want, if you want any more super indie stuff, go to indiewrestling.us. Uh, US. I believe Traegar also has a nice little write up about stuff on there. Um, also, I mean, if you just search, just go into our search feature and type in any wrestler. I bet you. Well, well not and not any wrestler. Not any you wrestler. Know, you know who won't show up on there? Chris Benoit. Randy Orton. <clears throat> That's true. <laughs> Randy Orton won't show up on that. Uh, but but you, you look up any current independent wrestler. They have been to Ohio. They have been to Pennsylvania. They have been to and they're they're they have been to indiewrestling.us. And that's where you can find it. Excellent. All right. Now Riz, let's talk yes. about glow. Yes. We're not talking about Naomi. We're talking about the Glow trailer for Netflix. Mm-hmm. How fucking amazing does this look? <laughs> it looks like it looks like Orange is the New Black, mm-hmm. but with wrestling. It kind of does. It kind of does. And Mark Marin. And Awesome Kong. Yes. And awesome was she Kong. in the trailer? Yes. Oh, yeah, she was. Oh yeah, she she's the was. she's the one person that says fuck in the trailer. Yes, she was. The, the one lady that just turns around and goes, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, 
I'm I'm so actively excited for this. Like mm-hmm. it, it look because Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling like was a big thing back in the eighties. But it looks like like they're it looks like this is trying to explain pro wrestling to people who are not fans of pro wrestling. Like saying that you have to have stereotypes, you have to have some level of acting. Like mm-hmm. it looks like so much fun. It does. And and I like that they're not shying away from like mature rated themes. Like this does not look like a show for kids at all. No. No, 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 no. Not even close. I, because that's what I thought it was going to be, honestly. Because I remember catching glimpses of, of of Glow when I was a little kid, and that was very, it was kind of like Wrestlelicious. It was similar. Oh, it, it was Wrestlelicious back then. Yeah, like like in the vein of Wrestlelicious, which Wrestlelicious, if you don't remember ever watching Wrestlelicious, please Google Wrestlelicious. Wrestlelicious, baby. Wrestlelicious. Yeah. Um, but. Anyways, the, the it, I want to watch it now. Actually, yeah, like it makes me want to like because it gives you all the inner workings of how in the in that time how people got jobs. You know what it kind of like, reminded me of, Riz? Mm-hmm. A league of their own. Yes, kind of remind me of that. It did, and and it was like, hey. Because if if you remember, it started in an acting class or an a, an acting audition, mm-hmm. where where this lady, I guess, didn't do well. Well, so, the, the the beginning of the trailer is that um this this main character Alison Brie, that was Alison. Oh, Brie, that right? was Alison Brie. Yeah, with the eighties hair. Um, oh my god! She was in an acting audition and she kept reading the parts for men. Mm-hmm. She's. Pardon the pun. She's not like most girls. Uh, <laughs> why didn't they get Nia Jax for this? They should have gotten Nia Jax for this too. Like anyone who's slightly irregular from the world of women's wrestling, they should have mm-hmm. gotten for this. But um, but yeah. So she she had a bad audition, and then she heard about something else, and enter Glow, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, and it's if you haven't seen the trailer. Please go check out the trailer. We don't have like, the tech right now to play the trailer. Plus, we'd probably get pulled from Netflix. Yeah, that's true. From from Netflix. Yeah, we're, we're on Netflix. Uh, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, you I, know I, what I, I meant. I know what you, you meant. know what I meant. You, Riz. Said, you said Netflix. Though. I got confused. But, we're talking about Netflix. But and then I'm going to go back. To this Mark Marin plays the creepy, creepy promoter to the T. He's like the creepy on. mustache, the weird one-liners. It, it's gonna be a ama- it's gonna be a great sense to see how batshit insane these guys were. Yeah, I, I'm re- I'm really looking forward to the show. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, so Riz, yes. Before we uh before we log off here, Tina has let us know that another amount was in that. Another match was announced for Backlash. Another one? Another one. And another one. Luke Harper versus Eric Rowan. Okay. Backlash just keeps kind of improving. I like it. Yeah? I, I, it, really, I, I And I was one of the few ones who liked Eric Rowan when he first did a singles match. Like, like the singles run when he was like the weird... Uh, the Vintner. <laughs> yeah, that one. Uh, <laughs> the but, now, the but now both of them are kind of still creepy. And now they're going to beat each other up for another like 10 minutes. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm fine I, with it. And Eric Rowan got the win on SmackDown a couple weeks ago. So I'm thinking Luke gets the win back. What do you think? Yes. I'm, I'm with you on that one. I think Luke, I think Luke Harper is due. Unless... Eric Rowan brings in a new no. like Wyatt cousin. No. No. I it could happen. Who are they gonna bring up? I don't know. Just bring in some Razor. Braun, Braun, Not... Braun Strowman came out of nowhere. Razor is supposed to come out now? Uh, Dil- Dylan Miley. Which one's if, that? If you don't know who Dylan Miley is, you should watch him NXT. Because <laughs> Dylan Miley is really good. 
Or just yeah. go swerve and bring out like or bring out Ruby Riot. No, because if you're gonna have a female, she has to be Sister Abigail at this point. This is true. Um, also, Brandon is saying in the chat room uh, for he, I asked for some clarification on his "How I Met Your Mother" wrestling show. Mm-hmm. He said that Cena and Nikki are the couple of the show, and um, Ellsworth is Ted searching for love, and Ambrose is playing Barney. That that sounds like a weird show. He um, lost me on Ellsworth. Yeah, Ellsworth doesn't. Really, and I don't see Ambrose as, as a Barney Stinson type. I, I, don't, I don't see that personally. I see Dolph Ziggler but, as a Barney Stinson type. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, also, um, apparently WWE is wanting to hire a female referee. Good for, you, good for WWE. I, I say good for them until I wonder if that's strictly for the women's... Tournament, yeah, because then not good for you, WWE. But then, then, and then after that, you have to go. Is he is, or is she going to be on SmackDown? Well, with, I mean, with it, JBL it, always commenting on her, you can't have that. No, can't have, can't can't have that at all. Uh, and and crazy. Oh shit. Brandon's right. You know who could be a Wyatt cousin? You know who could be a Wyatt cousin, Riz? Who? Crazy Steve from TNA. Oh. He's exa- oh, that's exactly right. Oh. No, I actually wouldn't but mind why, that. But I wouldn't would mind that. Be... I wouldn't mind that. I see more and more sanity, though. Potentially, but sanity has enough, guys. Sandy doesn't need any new members. Like, but Crazy Steve going right into teaming with Eric Rowan. Ooh, I actually, I really like that. I really like that because it's like a better version of Decay. <laughs> it's like a better version of Decay because it's, Matt, with, it's Matt, basically within Abyss. Ma- it's Mike. We can, the two of us can do a better version of the Decay. This is a fair point. This is a fair point. We would, need a, we would need a third female. I'm pretty sure Tina would be down for volunteering to be the Rose. Yes, she okay. would. Yes. <laughs> I'm volunteering her now. Absolutely. All right. Um, I don't even know who you are, Tina, but guess what? You just got recruited. <laughs> All right. So, Riz. Yes. Um, what did you learn in the world of professional wrestling this week? Wrestling is strange. Would 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 you would you care to elaborate? I mean, we live in a time <laughs> where where we're gonna have a title match featuring Breeze Dongo and uh, Jinder Mahal, and then also we're gonna have an it. We're going to have, I saw with my own two eyes, Adam Cole in the same ring, in, in a ring that in, in the vicinity of where I was. And, and not only that, it's just a strange feeling that you get when you watch professional wrestling. Okay. Period. All right. Alrighty. And I don't care what Randy Orton says. This is mine. Hip toss. <laughs> and that's that's in the SpongeBob the new SpongeBob meme by the way. Meme voice, by the way. Oh god. Hip toss. No, we, Hip we, we toss. need we need to stop this we need to stop the SpongeBob meme. Also, uh Tina says Jinx will be a better fit for our version of Rosemary. This and is true. That's not that's not entirely inaccurate. This is very true. <laughs> All right. Uh, I learned this week that um, I want to I I want to just hang out with Finn Balor and Kevin Owens. I just want to hang out with those guys because I I because I know you didn't see it yet, Riz. Uh, the Finn Balor documentary that they have on the network. It's mm. so good. It's so good because it shows like. How much of a connection Finn had with a lot of the guys, even though he hasn't been in WWE for that long, but like 
the stuff that he the connection he has with Sami Zayn with Kevin Owens and a and big Cass is a big part of it. Hmm. I didn't even know they were that close, but apparently Cass is pretty cl- pretty tight with Finn. Huh. Like, yeah, and like there's just so many things to just make your make your heart grow three sizes when you watch it because Finn is like he's kind of like wrestling's version of Fivel from American Tail. <laughs> okay. Like, like he comes to America and he's like, you know, there are no cats in America and the streets are paved with cheese. And that's, that's kind of his wrestling story. It's fantastic. <laughs> and everyone is just, like, no one had a single horrible thing to say about him or even imply, like, and the part where, where Seth Rollins shows up at the same rehab facility as he is. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. That's such a weird story. Like, that's such a, a weird serendipitous thing. And I really, really loved it. Um, WWE does these document like WWE does these documentaries so well. They're going to convince me. I liked the Goldberg run. But nobody's nobody can do that. I'm no, nobody I'm, can, it, nobody can shine. Nobody can shine that turd. I'm I'm convinced based on their documentary skills that they can do that. I'm is absolutely like, convinced. Is this like it. WWE's pro, like promo packaging deal? Like the promo packaging people? Is that what is that what we're doing now? No, it's it's the documentary people. I mean, Whoever, did they get promoted to do that? Yes, I, I think they uh, should. Um, but it was just a it was a really good documentary. Um, now we have uh Brandon in the chat room and he learned that indie shows are fun. He went to his first one on Saturday night. The company was called NWLKC. Oh yeah, he did send an email doing that the same thing too. I didn't get to that one yet. Oh, okay. I kind of assumed that was going to be for Do you have the email? I well, I mean it just said what you just said. Like he, oh, okay. he, he, it was just t- it was just titled what I learned and he just I, I learned that indie shows are fun. I went to my first one on Saturday night. The company was NWLKC. Now, uh, Brandon, I, I would love to know who is in this. Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, I, I don't this, want names. Send us an email next week, and uh, if we don't read on the Mayhem Show, I'm sure they'll read on the Indie Mayhem Show. Mm-hmm. For when Sorg's feeling a little bit better. So, for when Sorg is not throwing up everywhere. Yeah, when he doesn't have Mantar Pox. Mm-hmm. Um. But I, I was told that he might have found where parts are known as. He might have. I'm not sure. He, although the Mantar Pox might make him for, make make him, might make him forget. Oh, okay. um, uh, before we leave, we do have an answer to a, to a big question. Oh, excellent. Uh, from, from uh, those guys suck. Oh, uh, okay. Wrestlers frequent a bar in Memphis. And they're all, they're all, croft puppets. The owners, are, the owner and bartender, is real is at real Jim Cornette. <laughs> I'd binge watch that. I'd binge watch that. <laughs> I'd, I'd definitely binge watch that. Oh, that that <laughs> that sounds fun. Um. All right then, uh, and Tina, because she's a Patreon, she she is promoting something on on the chat room. If anyone's looking for a new promotion to check out, check out Defy on Demand for three ninety nine a month. Hmm. All right, excellent. Should we also talk about Fight F I T E. Where um, you can get all of your wrestling, that you, yes. all of your professional wrestling that you love or maybe doesn't love love as well. Um, I know. Uh, Good friend of the show, Joe Dombrowski, has his own promotion, and he just had his welterweight tournament, mm-hmm. which is now on Fight TV. So go ah, excellent, and look that shit up. All right, excellent. I, okay. I'm allowed. To, I'm allowed to promote because I'm on the show. <laughs> also, Riz. nicely done, sir. Hashtag where's Riz? Uh, mm-hmm. I all right. wasn't there. That's okay. Uh, Riz, where can people find you on the internet? 
Uh, actually, tomorrow. Oh, maybe not tomorrow because the penguins are on. Uh, sometime this week, I will be streaming. Uh, Injustice Two. I just got that too, Riz. It looks amazing. It's like, a I, fun I, game. I need to play it some more. I need to do some story mode, and you'll be seeing me do story mode and and doing the let's play because that's what I'd like to do is play video games. Riz, Riz, yes. before before you do that, you know what you should do hmm. tomorrow before the Pens game. You should stop at your local bookstore or comic book store and read the Injustice Two comic. I don't want to spoil myself. No, no, no! It's a prequel. From what Is I've it... from what I've been told, it's a prequel. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Man because Mike. the Injustice Two comic is really good. Sorry, hey, slight off. Hey, man, Mike. Man, yeah. Mike. Man, Mike. Yeah. What do you got going on for yourself, big boy? Well, you can find me, <laughs> big boy. Easy I don't killer. know. Easy I don't killer. Know what I was doing there? <laughs> is it because I'm wearing it. a collared shirt? That's probably it. <laughs> you can find me at Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter machine. You can also uh, look up my live tweets for Impact on Thursday night at Mayhem Show ha- hashtag MM. And uh, this Thursday we will be having the midweek board back on. We're going to be talking some two hundred five live, some NXT where we're going to do a full preview on uh, Takeover Chicago. I know we didn't get to it tonight. We'll probably talk a little bit about the UK uh, show that's coming on Friday too, since we don't really know too much about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, we'll be doing a full preview with uh, predictions and all that stuff on the midweek war. And I'll be talking Impact again. And if if you haven't watched Midweek War from last week, um, please watch the Impact one because I played a fun game because I was doing it by myself called Hashtag Make Impact Fake. I did a whole report on Impact, but I threw in two fake facts. And if someone wants to tell me what they think they are without having to watch the show because you shouldn't watch the show, Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it, it was fun. And if Sorg isn't available this week, I might just do it again because I had fun coming up with the fake, the fakery things. <laughs> All right. Um, so, for Riz, Hi. Um, for Mad Mike, that's me, and uh, for Fake Sorg, thank you to producer Missy. And uh, we'll catch you next week for Ma'am Show 572, Mayhem. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.